Okay. <laughs> um, I'm Mary. Um, I actually do better not standing in front of stuff. I'm Mary. Um, I heard about this program through Bud. I've known Bud for a number of years. Um, it's very interesting how I got to come to this program. My uncle, my maternal uncle, passed away. And his funeral was Wednesday. And I'd um, filled out the, the forms and spoken to Joy and heard that I wasn't accepted in the program. And my first reaction was that was another rejection from a Seventh-day Adventist church group. <laughs> because I have had many of them, because I don't quite fit the mould. Can you speak here? Oh, maybe I can stand. Sorry, maybe I can stand here. Yeah. Louder. Sorry. Louder. I'm, I'm not a loud speaker unless I'm losing my mind. But um, I'll try. I'll speak. I'll try. Yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, it might work if I step further away because sometimes that's a good strategy for speaking up louder. <laughs> oh, I've done it again. <laughs> I'll stand here. No, right. Okay. So. So in the midst of that, I thought, okay, I've got the go ahead, go to my nephew's, or go to my uh, paternal uncle's funeral. A lot of history there, a lot of history, and uh, fearful to go, um, fearful to go. Um, but not going to an Italian family's funeral when it's your uncle, <laughs> and that's what I was fearing, particularly since my dad... Um, living relatives on um, immediate family, my dad, my brother, my sister, and my dad's new wife, and my um, nephew were going. So I looked like, well, you'd know the word for that. And so I'm sitting there going, oh, I'm going to have to go. But what was so amazing was, well, no, it wasn't amazing because when I prayed about it, I got. I got something that shocked me, and I'll, I'll give you my conversation with God, so you know, you may not approve of the way I speak to God, not many people do, but God and I are like this. Mm. And he said, I said, Lord, I don't know what to do about this, where does it go? And I heard in my spirit, let the dead bury their own dead. Mm -hmm. And I was really upset, because I've been praying for my extended family. And I said, Lord, surely you can't mean that. I mean, I've been praying for them. And, and you know, like, with all due respect, Lord, which means I'm about to be disrespectful. Lord, what's going on? You know, why? What are you telling me? It was extremely painful for me. And I thought, surely that was my spirit, my my, my, I would, I'd, I'd held on to something they'd done to me, let the dead bury their own dead. It was my my wickedness coming out. So I prayed again. Let, let the dead bury their own dead. Came back. And it was really hard. It was really hard to think that in my family, after all these years of prayer and fasting, that my family in God's eyes, will refer to the dead. That was really hard. Anyway, so when I get here, it's really nice, you know. I, I'll, and Joy changes. By the way, Joy, Joy invites me to come, and then I, I come, right? And when I get here, it's really nice. And I'm, and I'm thinking on Tuesday night, I'm praying, Lord. You know, I can still go to this funeral. <laughs> I can still do that. Maybe that wasn't you. Maybe that was just a voice in my head. And, and, and I was trying to think of what I'd have on, held on to, and I couldn't. You know, it's one of those times where you can't find something that you can say, yes, I've held on to that, so therefore, no, no. Anyway, and I asked God to confirm it for me one more time in the morning. And in the morning, we heard that story. Do you remember about that man? That for him to enter into the kingdom of God, he had to give away everything. But the only thing I remember about that is I misunderstood what was going on. I turned to the wrong page in my diary, in my, in my um, 
Bible. Bible, yeah, that thing that we're meant to be reading. And, <laughs> and I put my, fin my, my finger to the verse, it might have been the right one, Matthew 8, 22. Let the dead bury their own dead. Uh -huh. So that's something now I've got to take away from here to deal with. But there was something else, because you see, with God, I'm precocious. Don't think, don't be thinking I'm just precocious with you, Lord. No, God gets all of me too. So I said, Lord, what am I going to do about my washing? I didn't bring enough warm clothes. I need to wash them. Anyway, I'm just having that conversation with God. And Steve says, let me show you where the washing machine and dryer is. And it's like, oh, okay. And I thought, okay, okay. So I thought, okay, Lord, you've made it really abundantly clear that I'm not meant to go. But I haven't heard anything from my family um, about my absence, which has been pretty good. So that was me getting here. In terms of what God has done for me here, He's really... I have many issues, you know. I, 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 I don't have enough hands and feet to count them on. And one of them has been um, identified that I have because of um, what I've experienced, I have this sense that I have no voice, that I have nothing of value to add to anything, any conversation, anyone. It's a belief that has been with me for a number of years. And, and what's happened here is I have felt it's so interesting. It's like when you feel you got, when you feel your voice doesn't matter. With me, I just wanted to speak up all the time, you know, and then and then say no, no one cares. And then all of a sudden there was this shift in me, and I felt it, and it was maybe people are interested, maybe they're not. Wait for God to tell me if He wants me to say it. And it was amazing. I actually felt they actually felt amazing. That was just part of it. I noticed that in my prayers here with people, that I'm, I'm an intercessor. So, um, you know, with intercessors, I've learnt through my own experience from meeting other intercessors, and we're like a, in addition to me being odd of my own accord and all my peculiarities and what have you, just we're an odd, bun odd bunch in general. We don't have lists, right? As an intercessor, I don't have a list. You know, I'll meet people, I do not have a list. But when God asks me to pray, I'll pray, I'll pray, I'll pray, and I'll do things like I'll get the name wrong of someone. For example, I was praying with Aaron, and I kept calling him by someone else's name. And I haven't done that with Aaron yet, so I know to pray for that person. That's been happening more and more here, where God is, seems to be doing that. I've been able to... When I first came, remember I said that my my hopes were, well, or what I think God's going to do for me or why I'm here. Well, I think I know why I'm here, but I'm not sure. And it was to fast and grow closer to God. Amen. And that's happened. And I've also had... I've also met some amazing people that I'd really like to keep in touch with. It has felt... Like there's a genuineness mm. and an authenticity here that I really miss. And also I live alone. I don't have pets. I've lived alone for a number of years. So it's been really nice being in this environment. It's been welcoming and warm mm. and re and affirming. And I, I want to thank you all for that. For, I guess, just being nice. Maybe just being who you are. Thank you. I, I'm really enjoying my time playing in the kitchen. <laughs> and I really appreciated the grace I was shown to enter in there, in and out, willy-nilly, muck around, help a few dishes, stir a few pots and get out. That's been fun. And I've really uh, appreciated the kind of uh, the heart that that demonstrated the generosity of spirit and just the, the, the easy flow, do you know, the easy, relaxed flow of it, and that's been really nice. Um, in terms of what's done for me physically, I've had issues with water retention that I used to treat with caffeine. 
I've never been a big eater, I've been a wrong eater. Two cups of espresso coffee in the morning, I make my milk, full cream milk, had to be the organic one, and it'd be frothed up. That's what I do. My nephew brought me a little hand frother, not one of those little machines. I'm against machines. I'm not a big thing. I'm a bit of a Luddite in that respect. Haven't had a tally for 20 years. Um, and so it's one of those, you know, um, one of those ones you just pop in a cup and press on the handle a few times and it frosts up the milk. That's my, that's my routine. Um, my first meal's at 12 and I eat what I like. Uh, some, I'm not a big meat eater. Um, generally, I'm, um, I, I do eat meat. I'm, I'm generally opposed to the current um, um, farming practices. So my meat eating, well, my dad has a farm, and, and I feel like I need some backup here. Bud's been to my farm, and he sees, to my dad's farm, and he sees that everything's organically grown, and how he looks after his animals. But if I eat meat, it'll be at my dad's farm. And then, even then, Italian cuisine isn't a big slice of meat, okay? We just don't eat that way. But I can see the benefits of what this plant-based diet has done for me. That my, um, my swelling, it's largely gone. I still have some in my face, but then I've been crying a lot. I still have some in my face. My ankles, largely, they're a lot better. And also, um, I've been able to lose, I think, three and a half kilos maybe three and a half kilos, um, which, you know, I'm always grateful for. And I really um, see myself um, taking on board the principles which Bud, he's so patient, <laughs> which Bud has kind of been sort of moving me towards. And I appreciate that, thank you. Um, and again, thank you for the, this is a beautiful premises that we have here. Yeah. It's actually been fun being in this most amazing environment. Amen. Aren't you going to miss it? Sorry? Aren't you going to miss it? Mm. Uh, that's yes. what I feel. I feel oh. I'm going to miss looking out the window and just taking in that glorious oh, yeah. view. Or, oh, and also, sorry, I also have to thank those of you who know that I did my glutes and my hamstrings and have been very patient walking with me <laughs> and in some cases <laughs> nearly carrying me up the hill <laughs> because I could only walk like this. <laughs> but I really appreciate that. All in all, I've had a wonderful time and you've all made that possible. And I really appreciate the effort of the staff. I'm actually a, a teacher, or used to be a teacher. And so I, I really appreciate the effort of the staff because as I've said to Joy, um, I understand that a lot of work goes into making this look so easy mm -hmm. and, and and so in my head I can almost imagine the work and um, I'll say thank you to everyone and of course I'll thank and praise God for this opportunity. Amen. Amen.